Father, we lift up Reverend Michelle to you. And Lord, we just praise you for her life and we just ask for a fresh anointing upon her, strengthen her body, strengthen her spirit. And Lord, as we learn more about holiness and the need to be holy like you are holy, in the same way that we want to be like Jesus and we walk in progressive sanctification, Lord, as we become more holy and more like Jesus, we pray that this message that we will hear today, along with all that we've already heard, will set us up firmly up along that path as we learn to seek you more, as we learn how to love you more, and as we learn how to love each other more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are people where God is pouring out the word. And last week, I want you to always remember these two verses. But I'm going to read it to you. 2 Timothy 3, 2 to 5, and Revelation 3, 16 to 18. Again, we're coming back with this. And we're going to go into it short, sharp, deep, and you will take from it what you must take from it, saints, because time is short. So we can stand for the reading of the word, 2 Timothy 3, 2 to 5. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away. These last two lines having a form of godliness but denying its power you need to have underlined in your Bibles. And the second passage that we read last week, Revelation 3, 16 to 18. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. This is God's word. Be seated in his presence. I just want to say to you that on Friday, the theme was similar. And this is fairly straightforward. And more and more, I am aware that when I speak or when there are certain topics, there are those who will come off of Zoom. And more and more, there are those who will walk out of the church. I am just letting you all know because you all are very easily shocked. I'm not. I'm letting you all know it has already started. Okay? Because no one wants to be corrected. No one wants to hear messages that speak of living right, of holiness, of repentance. I spoke to the leader of a ministry, a big ministry, yesterday. And I think, I mean, I've spoken to other pastors. But this person, it was all bottled up inside. And they, all leaders who care for, for the people, I'm finding are saying the same thing. There are adults, yes, who are not living right. But there are those in the millennial generation there's the Gen Z's, but I want to point to the millennials. And this person was asking me, what is it the generation before did to mess this generation up so? Because what they are finding 
This is the attitude. I don't want to hear you, so I'm locking you off. I'm coming off Zoom, I'm leaving the church. And the parents are treated that way. And they come to church in ministry. And then the leaders of ministry have to put up with the attitude wondering, what? As this lady said to me, and I've spoken to men and women, but they're living for Jesus. We have a problem understanding this entitlement attitude and this attitude that they know what is right all the time. It doesn't occur to them that perhaps they could be wrong. Where has it gone? That we work together, the older teaching the young. And I mean work together in love. So this lady, like she wanted to vent. Because they have a huge ministry. That's making a difference in Trinidad and Tobago. But all the older ones who hip hurting, who foot hurting, who knee hurting. They still have to be serving 100% because no one is stepping in. Because fruit is not coming forth. Saints, you do know, it's not a matter of how spiritual and gifted you sound. It's a matter of character and fruit. Nobody's going to come and preach and, and minister to people and teach the people in this church if you don't have a proven track record of fruit. It takes time. Nobody's saying you can't because there's been too much damage done by those who are not living right that want to hurry their process. To take care of God's people and then when you hear thing happen they haven't yet gotten the kind of breakthroughs they need to be able to divide not only the word accurately but set a good example since the biggest problem right now in Christianity is there's a generation that believes that I heard Cindy say it. You say you're right. But there's a way that seems right unto a man. That leads to death. So it has nothing to do with you feeling you're right. Or us feeling we're right. It has to be. What does God's word say? What is the context of the word? What is their message to the original audience? It has nothing to do with what we feel it's saying. Because what's happening is the blind is leading the blind. So you have a generation that trusts nobody but themselves and each other, their age. And they're leading each other astray. But the attitude is so poor. that some ministries. I heard a pastor, he told me, he says, who is stepping in to succession? Because aside from choosing not to live in sin, there is the attitude. I'm not pouring my life like that out. So if you want me, you have me two hours a day. But after that, I have other things planned. In other words, the surrender to Jesus Christ is limited by the things that we believe we need in this life. So there are problems in many of the churches that are wanting to do what is right in God's eyes. Not all churches. I don't swallow this thing like, you know, the churches and them. I will say that there are churches that are not doing what is right. But there are those that are. And as he said, he in his six days, he, he literally has to kneel down to beg. Not just for help, but for help. From those who want to live right. There is a lukewarmness that has come into the church. Where when we read lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, 
the word here is about those who are in church form of godliness this is not unsaved this is not pagans this is not people who don't know who Jesus Christ is but have I said last week and I'll say it you can profess Jesus Christ but it doesn't mean that he possesses you or that you possess him because there are things that creep in and all we are saying is can we revisit what the word says about sin so that we are not people who simply are making up our own definition of what we think sin is in our life leaving out anyone who perhaps can say you want to reconsider what you're doing because what you're doing is not in line with God's word that's what God wants for his people that's where God calls his church and there wouldn't be the whole world that would be up in your business but when you go to the extreme where Nobody must know anything about you. I wonder if you are looking at the model of the church of Jesus Christ and the way we are called. We are set apart people, accountable, transparent, to be equipped to learn so that we can also teach others. It's nothing to do with feeling. It's nothing to do with figuring out. And I'll go so far as to tell you all, I understand there's something going around, I'm not saying it's not true, where some part of the U.S., some university students, and they think that revival has broken out. And, and I'm not saying people are wrong to think so. Busloads are going, lives are transformed. Y'all, let me tell you something about me. Those things, though, phase me. Because I have read about enough revivals in the past that ended in counterfeit thing. If you want to know if somebody is being transformed and not just drawn to a lot of excitement, you got to be around them for a while after that. So when you see you get reports, lives are changed. I'm a scientist to where some people think I'm not. Some people think my husband is the only logical one. I want you to show me the fruit six months down the road. I don't just want to see the weeping and oh gosh, I love Jesus. I'm going to turn to him and you're going to tell the news reporter outside. Yes, yes, he is there. My life is turning around and then it gets reported as revival. I will know and you will know and everybody will know if it's revival. If the trees are bearing good fruit down the road. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because I don't see that God is going to change the scripture where every day you've got to pick up your cross and follow him. And while the work of the Holy Spirit is there to help us, we have to choose. So they don't have no instant nothing. But I will admit, there will be, like we do on Friday. I mean, it is, listen, there's no way you could deny when you have experienced deliverance and transformation. When you come on a Friday, you can't deny that. And many people message. And what do I tell them? Let's continue appointments to see if that fruit lasts in. Then we will know if you are in encounter with the Holy Spirit. That you say is the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes it could be just emotionalism. But we are finding more and more very quietly. Lives are changing. So I just want to say. You're going to hear about revival. And I'm not doubting. It could be authentic. But please. Let's not call revival what people describe as they believe is the presence of God and they didn't want Jesus and now they want Jesus what has to happen you've got to pass from these sins of the flesh to the fruit of the Holy Spirit you've got to be exemplifying love self-control a desire for Jesus every single day that takes time so don't be discouraged don't be discouraged y'all because there's some are like but i'm not quite there but here's where we start stop wanting the quick fix 
Stop feeling as if the Holy Spirit didn't come down on you, but it came down on somebody. Their life changed and yours didn't. You don't know the fasting that person is doing. You don't know what they have decided they are no longer going to do. You don't know which friend they've told, I cannot hang out with you anymore. Because every time I hang out with you, I leave more like you. And you don't care what I stand for. Some of you will say that's not good as a Christian. Well, I would like you. Not today, eh? Give me a few days. Taking a little rest. Come with your Bible. You are called to share the gospel as Jesus Christ calls you. It has nothing to do with who you want to line with. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with who you comfortable being around. You are a set apart people called to share the gospel, but you are called first to live the gospel. This approach with don't mind now. We could go in the party and we could hang out and then we'll go and then we'll read the Bible and talk about Jesus. Stop fooling the people now. Listen to me all. I am 60 something years old. I am letting you know lukewarm will not change the world. You've got to be radical for Jesus, meaning you are surrendered and you, there may be areas that you're struggling with then you get the help to surrender but when you are surrendered to jesus you just want to go where more of his presence is you say but his presence is everywhere yes but he dwells in the midst of the praises of his people so the more of his people that come together there is an outpouring that comes very different to when you're by yourself so you don't even have to think, you know the traffic to come, you know this to come, you know, no, 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 no. When you are surrendered, when he is your first love, people have to try their best to stop you from coming. You will never have a problem of, you know, I really need a sandwich to eat, you know, and by the time I get there, by the time I, you, you all understand what I'm saying? God is calling us that way. Those disciples, they were persecuted and they would not stop. They would not stop. I'm here to tell you, when we speak holiness, it's not legalism. It's actually what will free you. Because the more you desire what he says he wants for you, follow me, what he says he wants for you is the more in this life. You will walk through the fire. You will go in the deep waters. You will not drown. You will not burn. You know there will be trouble. But you will say, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I continue to go forward, God. You said you would take me. Yes, I'm getting blows. But I'm not turning back. That comes from saying, I surrender. Because the opposite of that is, You'll say, well, not surrender. No, let me tell you what the opposite of it is. A comfortable way of serving him. Where you will not be challenged. I told you all last week, the apostate church. That's already here. When you will want more and more and more for your business. You say, well, what's wrong with that? I said last week, your focus could be so much building your business. You ain't even know when you became a lover of money. Because that's your focus. We are not saying that you're not to earn. I'm letting you know. Some crossed the line and didn't even know they crossed it. You will become boasters. Proud. Nobody could tell you anything. Our sister shared, why is everybody's car breaking down? And not mine. But you see, she's accountable. You see, she's transparent. She don't come in her discipleship sessions to tell me what she think I want to hear. I have a relationship with her. I would say like, don't tell me all the nice things. You know, you could tell somebody that and they'll get offended. They never come back. Eh? So I usually tell people, if you come in, 
to tell me what you think I want to hear. Don't come now. Because you see 2023, they have a kind of Holy Ghost boldness on me that I have to ask God, Father, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I have no time for the pretense. This is what is happening. You come and say all the nice things, but you don't say what you're really doing so you could get help. I want you all to understand that's pride. And what happens here, it becomes easier and easier. We become a people who make fun of other people because they're too holy. We are literally blaspheming because we are acting like Satan towards God's people and calling good evil and evil good and in fact when someone seems to be serving God with all their heart they become a laughing stock that's already happening in the church and in the body of Christ I want you to know I'm not going to go through all but I want you to understand this is where we go to when we stop being transparent and we excuse sin and it continues. We become unthankful. Unthankful. Saints, when last have we given thanks that we could even come to church? Thanks that we have food. Thanks. You have pastors are still standing up even though I know he have a broken knee and I have an ex. Okay? Let me tell you all something about getting older. In your head, you don't feel old, you know. In your head, listen, our children looking at us with sympathy. I say, what happened to you? What is that I'm seeing in your eyes? But you know, you all need to know. You all have to slow down. Slow down where? Because in our mind, we are normal. You understand? But we can't hide when we limp in. You understand what I'm saying? We give thanks. Thanks that God could still use us. We give thanks for you all. We give thanks to God. He's keeping us. This is not any kind of condemnation. This is saying there are, is going to be continued partying for the next however many days. Saints, you're just going to hear of some young people that didn't make it. Don't let it be you. If you're not living right and don't let it be your friends, hopefully you'll get a word in. Go lead by example and go and be part of the crew because you don't want them to feel left out because us Christians could be a little bit, a little bit what? We're set apart people. I said on Friday, if you have the liquor locked away, whether you say approve or you don't approve, you have it there for your friends when they come because you don't want to offend them. You're a hypocrite. And you are leading them astray because they need you, like what Rev showed, to say, I don't serve alcohol in my house. And you know what? They might be longing to hear somebody talk to them about God. Just like what he showed. The man waiting to be invited to church and you waiting to invite him for lunch. But every Sunday you can't invite him to church because you're feeling a little funny. But you know, as a church, let's have lunch together. This is where we have gone. And we need to pull ourselves back. I need you to know that... The lover of pleasure rather than lovers of God. There's so much pleasure. I'm going to wrap up. Just, just give me a moment. I know the message is short. I don't need to overwhelm you and bombard you. I think between Friday's message and today, we must be getting the message. Lovers of pleasure. But you all know something? You all know how many things we still want to keep doing. And it is eating into our time in the word our time with the Lord, even our time to even be fed corporately. There are lots of things competing now. So there's nothing wrong with wanting something nice. But I am telling you, it's competing with being the people of God in one accord. Because our schedule is mapped out. We got to do this, 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 and whatever's left over. We come together corporately. God is calling us to get back. Get back to the time when you suddenly realize you needed Jesus. 
Get back to the time when you thought you had Jesus, but you realize he was calling you to go deeper. Get back to the time when you realize, wow, I thought I was saved, but I'm now saved. Get back to that time. Otherwise, you will end up having and walking in a form of godliness with no power. And I want to say to you that there's a lot of self. The social media has brought a lot of self. I know the, the youth are downstairs, but basically I want you to understand that I will make a statement here. There are very few role models for you to follow anymore. Go and stick to the word. Because unless you understand that someone can really love the Lord and mess up, some of you are so fixed on they are following Jesus. I'm glad I have somebody I could look at. If they mess up, could you please understand that does not take away from the fact that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Jesus Christ will take you through. So some of you, I have to tell you, stop with these role models that you're all following. Because you're not able to cope when they slip. They could slip. They could become very complacent. That's why we are very much in this church constantly teaching accountability, transparency. You never reach. From the time you don't want to be reached because you want to be by yourself, you are in a lot of trouble because you do not know. You do not know what fruit is there. You cannot tell the fruit by yourself. So I want you to know, as I close, the life of a godly man or woman, just because you live that way, will condemn the ungodly. They will not like it. Calm down now. What you going to do? Perhaps you're married to an ungodly man or an ungodly woman. Everything you do going and irritate them. You have a choice. Are you going to become like them? Or are you going to stand your ground and pray for them to eventually be affected by the way you choose to live? And this is why we made a statement earlier. There ought to be fewer marriages and fewer divorces in the body of Christ. Fewer marriages because you don't get married just because you want to get married. Because many times, people could say all they want until they get married and then they don't want to be discipled, they don't want to get help. And then you have to break the news to somebody that they really married an unsafe person. Because it's good, it's easy to hide. It's not good, but it's easy to hide. You tell a tree by its fruit over a period of time. So this is why all these goals we set, and marriage could be one. Paul said it. He said, it's not thus said the Lord, but, you know, when you are married, you have to see about the needs of your spouse before answering that big call that God may have for you. You will. You will answer God, but you cannot answer God the same way. Could you imagine if you marry an unsafe person? Hell on earth before you reach hell. Hopefully you won't reach hell for eternity. So I'm saying to you, the life of the godly man or woman will condemn the ungodly. The mere sight of them becomes a rebuke to their ungodliness. Sinfulness cannot abide such saintliness. So you're going to have problems. Love people back. But don't become like them. Don't change the way you're doing things to please them, but love them. You can love them, but love does not mean becoming like them. They may never want to become like you, but love them back. I know all you didn't catch on Friday what was going on. But I want you all to know, they had a witchy poo. And guess what? Witchy poo and I hugged at the end. Because I want she to know that Jesus loves she. If she come back in here without meeting with me, I'm not going to be as... I'm going to be more direct. 
What do I mean by that? God can save a witch. If Satan agent, didn't Christ die for all? But I like to let them know that I know why they're here. And I like to let them know I love them. But I also like to let them know we've come to a place now. If you are here to be transformed, you can come. But if you're not here to be transformed, and you are here to do damage to the saints, and that could come in many different ways, don't come. We are no longer tolerating this foolishness, but we are moving very slowly. But she and I know, because we met before, I'm not talking to a stranger, so I made sure before she left, I went and hugged her. And I said, I just want you to know I love you. And if your feelings were hurt, I'm so sorry. Meet with me, please. Leave your name and number. Because saints, I care for her soul, and my husband and I care for this church. We've been too, we've been so loving before that we took longer to tell people who we know come in here to do things that they're not supposed to do. And then people get, up, people get hurt. What am I saying here? We could say we love in Jesus. And we always want to love, love, love. And don't speak the truth to people. God will judge us. Do you understand what I mean by speaking the truth? Go and sit under Paul for a season. And hear how Paul spoke to the churches. Paul loved, but Paul spoke. Especially if there were those who were there. That were harming the people. But if all of you make up your mind. And I'm closing now because I've really gone over the time. I want you to understand something. If you have made up your mind to walk holy. Then those of you who pursue holiness from within the church. Do not take on those who mock you. In the church and outside the church. Because the hatred of the good. Is sometimes in fact, is born within people. And in the church, you may think they're born again. They're not yet born again. So they are going to have a problem with the holiness that God has called you. I want to say to those who think coming to this church or any church, everybody's saved. They're supposed to. But the weeds and the wheat grow together. You tell a tree by its fruit. And there may be those who are not yet convicted of sin and you are and they are unhappy you don't have to force them but you must not let them force you to be like them so I want to leave you with this I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is loving and gracious and kind the Holy Spirit has come to comfort us as we make our way home. We want to be here as long as possible so that we can reach more souls for Christ. The Holy Spirit is here to bring conviction of sin. Christ died for all. What you are seeing in the world now is what is in the prophecies. It's going to get harder, but you're going to get stronger. You're going to get stronger because sin carries weights. But you're hearing today, let go of that sin. Do not assume you have reached. Allow the word to begin to cut away and show you ways. Like Rev and I, three years ago, I wasn't going up to witchy poo and saying, I know what you're here for and I want you to know you're meeting with me before you come back. I wouldn't. I would be like, oh, I can't offend this person. Love does not offend. Well, I don't know what Jesus was doing when he was speaking truth because he offended plenty of people. But I realize now that could actually save her. That could save her to come for assignment. And I come to tell she how I love she. But I know what you're doing. Don't come back in here if you're coming to do it. Meet with me before you come back. And I will take the criticism from all of all you. Go to Jesus with it. Don't even bother to write me. Because none of all you are meeting with she. I is the one that have to meet with she. You understand? So I want you to know. 
There are some assignments don't ask for. So don't come and tell me how to do it. Because I love her. But I'm not going to sit back and watch something that is so obvious. Saints, God has made a way for us. Love people. Renounce sin. Make up your mind. Them friends and them that call in here to go and drink and do whatever. Satan have them doing that. If you could see the demons behind them, you would run. The word says run, but it's like, why well, I must run at one night? Maybe I could reach them for Jesus. Yeah, reach them for Jesus. By the time you finish, you're drinking with them. Talking about Jesus, that's blasphemous. So as we close today, pray for this nation. Many don't know. They don't know. They don't know. I spoke to some youth this week. You know what they told me? They told me, even though they struggle with stuff because it's in their face, one of their biggest challenges is the Christians that tell them that they're living right and then they see them living wrong. Because they know right and wrong. They don't see it like we see it. Well, you know, that person has a struggle. No. They say, Rev, we know right and wrong, you know. And some of us struggling and we're not sure we want to give up this or give up that. Right? But when people who tell us they live in right, so we must live right, then we see they live in wrong. It's hypocrisy. That is what is messing with some of them. So we have started telling them, no role models. Don't watch nobody in this church and call them a role model. Look to Jesus. Because they are young. You see, you all might have made that decision. There's some that haven't. But they're not stupid. They know wrong. And they know right. And they're looking for. Okay, they continue and they continue. They're living right. They're living right. They're living right. They're li what? Be careful what you post on social media. Days beyond social media. There's message on acts. We saw right. We, we, we saw that thing up there on social. That's not so, so, so. Hear me. Jesus help me. Earlier I said, no role models. Pray for people. Do you understand? And so right now, we're going to continue to pray for your safety, but that your soul will prosper. I want to ask my husband to come. I want to pray for you because a lot of them on the road drunk, and the spirits in them know the spirits of God, the, spirit, the Holy Spirit in you. Do you understand? They know that. You all are mocked. So in the same way, they get agitated when you are wrong. In the spiritual realm, they are agitated when you are wrong. So we're going to pray that God keep you in the cleft of the rock. But don't go breaking a hedge because a viper will bite you. Stay in the secret place of the Most High and... Do not excuse sin in your life. Confess it, renounce it, repent of it, and God will set you free. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we pray right now for all those on Zoom. Father, we pray that you will keep them, you will keep those in the sanctuary. Father, we know we went way over the time, but God, the message, oh God, that we will take to heart is that we must walk holy, we must live holy, we must love people, but we must not compromise and become like them. Father, cause the aroma of Christ to go forth from this church, from our families. May we take note, O oh God, of those who are struggling. May we seek, O oh God, to be that one, to be kind, to reach out, to be gentle, to be loving. But God, in Jesus' name, may we know that sin cannot stay there and be excused. We must renounce it. That we may be people of self-control, people of gentleness, people of faithfulness. People, oh God, that will not compromise. But will stand in this world and be counted for Jesus. It's a narrow road. Few will find it. And that's why we say we know few will make it, but God, may each one here and each one on Zoom 
make it them and their household in the name of Jesus. And Father, oh God, fill us with your peace. Fill us with your strength. Fill us with a desire to spread that gospel and to surrender to you those deep and hidden things. Purge out of us and bless us, Father, your love. Your love. Oh, he's a God of love. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Receive that love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.